بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله العلي الأرفق وجامع الأشياء والمفرق ذي النعم الواسعة الغزيرة والحكم الباهرة الكثيرة ثم الصلاة مع سلام دائم على الرسول القرشي الخاتم وآله وأصحابه الأبرار الحائز مراتب الفخار uh, Brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, this is a ta'aliq, uh, a very concise commentary uh, answering some of the uh, messages of some of our brothers in Cape Town, uh, South Africa. Uh, I received a message this morning uh, from one of the good brothers who is trying to do something that a lot of people have kind of uh, forsaken which is a tathabbut wa taakud wa tabayyun to verify to see confirmation uh, and when it comes to hearing things about brothers that you know to be upon goodness Naam. and the message today consists of a clarification that is needed in regards to two main people which is my shaykh Yahya al-Hajuri hafizahullah ta'ala uh, who is he was being made to look like as if he dislikes the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and that he's against them and that he sees them to be innovators. Um, and uh, and likewise Abu Sam al Dhabi likewise who is being made to look like he hates or insults the Sahaba. And this is not the first time I've been asked. There is brothers out there in this world in which there has been much fitan uh, been spread in it, who are trying to tear down the honour of people who are known to be upon the sunnah of the Prophet and this is not the first time I have heard people ask me about my Shaykh Yahya al-Hajuri about these issues that have been brought forth uh, I've been time and time again gone to different places to go give da'wah whether it was Jews, I remember some brothers asked me there and asked for a clarification I went to places like Milton Keynes, I went to places like just so many different places in like Glasgow brothers came up to me likewise saying that is does your Shaykh declare Uthman to be a Mubtadi' and you defend him X, Y and Z. So inshallah ta'ala I'm just going to take a few moments to just clarify these doubts about my Shaykh and read out the message and then just comment on each point bi idnillahi ta'ala. Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Akhi Abu Taymiya, may Allah reward you for your efforts in da'wah to as Salafiya. Wallahi we benefit so much. Just three questions I wanted to ask you because recently few brothers have been telling me not to listen to your lectures due to three points and they are as follows. <clears throat> First point which is your association with Green Lane Masjid after they clearly invite the innovators Kamal al makki Yasir Khadi and their likes as a Salafi should you be associating with a masjid like this? Is this not contrary to the Salafi and their principles? Second point, your association of Abu Sama al Dahabi after many ulama, including Ahmed al Najmi, Sheikh Falah bin Ismail, and more refuted al Dahabi's beliefs, beliefs such as that it is permissible to sit with the people of innovation and where he sits with the likes of Mink. And then the third point, your beliefs in the companions doing bid'ah. And if Uthman was Umm al Bid'ah, yani the mother of all Bid'ah that took place, uh, as your teacher Yahya al Hajuri believes, and after Yahya al Hajuri was refuted by many ulama, and even after al Hajuri was refuted for his beliefs, you continue to associate with him. Wallahi, this is not a criticism or refutation, it is just curiosity on the statement these brothers have brought up against you. Jazakallahu uh, khaira. Brothers and sisters, Wallahi, to be honest with you, I've become actually bored. In clarifying this, but uh, I'm just going to try and put this issue to bed once and for all so nobody discusses these things, inshallah, ta'ala, in the future. And the people are upon clarity, so a person can either become destructed while he's upon clarity, or you know, he can live while being upon clarity in these matters. So the first point, brothers and sisters, um, my association with Green Lane Masjid, uh, that which is very, very strange is, I don't understand where this question has originated from. Have I ever been seen in Green Lane Masjid giving da'wah in there? 
Have I given a lecture there? Have I given a khutbah there? Uh, yani, I don't understand where these brothers, they got the fact that I am associated with Green Lane. Okay? And brothers and sisters, even if I did go there for a lecture, or I went there to give a khutbah, then it could be a matter where it goes back to ishtihad. Naam. These are matters of ishtihad. A person now going to a masjid, let's just say for example, for argument's sake, for argument's sake, walaw sallamna jadalan as the Arabs say, that this masjid is a masjid of bid'ah. Okay? Um, as long as the masjid is not putting any conditions on you, and any restrictions, then I know that many, many scholars, many, many scholars, uh, have said that it's permissible. I personally have gone to a masjid uh, which was inclined towards the Sufiya, and I gave a khutbah trying to the best of my ability, ability ahsan in a nice way, naam, without obviously uh, making them hate the da'wah and also directly digging at them. I spoke about hubbu shari. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The true legislated love that we should have about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam With his proofs and evidences And I even spoke about the Mawlid And in a nice way You know As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mu'idati al hasana wa jadilum illati ahsan Naam And I've got many many scholars Likewise these people who are coming to you They take from the likes of Shaykh Rabi' bin Hadi al-Mithkhali And we have Videos of Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi al-Mithkhali He went to a masjid of the Tijaniya And he gave da'wah there Naam In a very nice way And then the Sheikh relates this And you can find the maqta' in the long list Or the long uh, playlist that's on my channel Which talks about the advice to Aspavs and their tales And things like that Which consists of like 130 videos And I've added that to it Naam So this is a matter, barakallah fikum ikhwani That goes back to al masalih wal mafasid and our religion is built on this al deen mabni ala al masalih fi jalbiha wa dar'il al qaba'ih fa in tazaham adad al masalih yuqaddam al a'la min al masalih wa dhiddu tazaham wal mafasid yurtakab al adna min al mafasid as imam al sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned so go back to the shuruh and also want to explain to you sometimes weighing the goods the uh, the benefits and the harms that come out of a certain actions i've been to a masjid where they do inkar of ijma' they do inkar of ijma' They don't believe ijma' to be part of the religion. And the whole khutbah I spoke about hujiyya to ijma'. This was quite some time ago. So if a person is going to go and speak billati ahsan or masjid now, they don't put any conditions on you, I personally believe it's permissible. If a Shi'i masjid call me tomorrow and they don't put any conditions uh, or anything like that uh, on me, I would most certainly go. And this is what Shaykh Muqbal bin Hadi al-Wadi and likewise my Shaykh Abdul Hamid al-Hajuri once did. They would go into a masjid and they would mention the virtues of Ali radiallahu anhu and at the same time, they would mention that Ali radiallahu anhu Man jahad a harfum fi al-Qur'an faqad kafar Whoever negates a verse from the Qur'an Then this person has disbelieved Naam uh, And then they would will, they will say Akhi, There's people, they don't believe in this And Ali radiallahu said this Ali radiallahu anhu narrated a hadith Man dabah li ghayri lah faqad ashraka Or la'an Allah man dabah li ghayri lah As he came in uh, Sahih Muslim Whoever now slaughters by other than Allah This person is cursed And they would mention in a very very nice way And many people accepted I remember Shaykh Abdul Hamid al-Hajuri who is a walking Sahih Muslim as he has memorized it he one time mentioned in a lesson that he did this and after the muhadara, after they wanted to beat him up as soon as he stood up in front of the people they said if Ahl Sunnah are like this then hayya hala ahlan wa sahlan welcome to them you know so uh, I've even one time compiled a risala which consists of 20 pages and fatawa of the kibar al-ulama the major scholars of our religion from them Sheikh Rabi' Sheikh Abdul Muhsin uh, Sheikh Al Fawzan, Sheikh Bin Baz, uh, and many of them who say that it's permissible. And you can find this on different websites. And I might put this under the uh, link of the video. Naam. So, guys, let's just say, for example, for argument's sake, they are Mubtadi'a. The Masjid is a Mubtadi'a Masjid. Okay, even this one, uh, it requires the matters to be brought back to the Scholars for them to actually speak on the matter. I am not in no position to make tabdi' of a masjid. Who am I to make tabdi' of a masjid? Naam. Uh, so I hope that matter is clear now. And the issue of Kamal Meki, guys, uh, to be honest with you, from what I know, they brought Kamal Meki and we saw the video of some of the things that he was saying. The following week, Abu Osama came out, who uh, at the time was part of the masjid, he gave a whole khutbah blasting the issue of Kamal Meki. Naam. And uh, this was clarified and it was criticized. 
and the matter from then on was dead. Naam. So if a message is going to be criticized, then I personally think that it's from Adil, justice, that you criticize them for that which remains unanswered. As for the issue, it has been clarified and you can find the khutbah online by Abu Samad Dhabi Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He's still alive. Uh, طيب. My association with Abu Usama al Dahabi after many ulama, including Ahmed al Najmi, Shaykh Falah ibn Ismail, and more, refuted al Dahabi's beliefs. Okay, when a person says beliefs, that means he has, you know, dodgy beliefs, and I, uh, you know, I kind of think that you're referring to him having spoken about some of the Sahaba and what he believes regarding them. Guys, you know this issue, and it has been clarified so much, it has been clarified so much. Uh, he mentioned some itlaqat some ambiguous general statements which were wrong about the companions some some companions from what i remember was abu bakr and another sahab which i have forgotten at the moment uh and he shouldn't have mentioned that and rather these itlaqat that happen from a person sometimes you need to be very very wary needs to be very very uh, cautious about it uh and not be putting it in the saha like that uh imam al-qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned his nuniya عليك بالتفصيل والتبيين فالإجمال والإطلاق دون بيان قد أفسد هذا الوجود وخبط الأذهان والأراء كل زمان He says upon you to be clear and to elaborate and not to come out with general unrestricted statements for indeed these general ambiguous you know unrestricted statements they were the main reason as to why there has been so much confusion in every time and error Naam Ibn Al-Qaim Rahimahullah Ta'ala says this so it's important that the person He's very cautious and he clarifies and elaborates on maybe some general statements he mentioned. And even then, guys, I remember when I came from Damaj, some of my own brothers were saying this to me. The guy, يطعنوا في الصحابة, يطعنوا في الصحابة. Akhi, you're putting the guy's Islam into question, بالله عليك, which I found very, very strange. And then I done ta'akkud and I done tathabut. Uh, I met Sheikh Abu Sama and we sat down for a few hours and we spoke about some of these things and he told me his position on it and that he's clarified it so many times but there wasn't necessarily, I couldn't find a video or audio or anything like that but then Alhamdulillah, may Allah reward him for this he got a brother to compile all his retractions in so many different times and uh, so many different times and if you type into YouTube you will find public and you type in public retraction of Abu Sam al Dhabi, you'll find that the Shaykh he's clarified this so many times and when 2016 coming into 2017 and people are still saying this, I just find that truly strange and astonishing. Either people, they don't want to accept the people's tobas, or this is just out of ignorance. Now, as for Sheikh Falah ibn Ismail and Sheikh Ahmed Najmi, Yaqwan Ahmed and Najmi, they asked me a general statement. And you don't know how it had a diamond. They just keep, you know, revolving and jumping up and down. Uh, behind Sheikh Ahmed Najmi on what he said about Abu Sama, they asked him a general question. What do you say about the person who says X, Y, and Z about Sahaba? What do you want the Sheikh to say? That he's a Sunni, mashallah, upon goodness and greatness? Of course, the Sheikh is going to reply in such a way. Naam? And, uh, and the fact that he, he was general, they didn't even say to him a name. Because apparently Abu Sama said that the Sheikh knows him. And I'm sure if you know a person and then something has become apparent from him, you're going to ask. You're going to verify and you're going to look into this issue further. But they asked him, what do you say about a person? That's a general statement. Naam, it was very, very general and vague. Another thing is, uh, we can't blame the sheikh for what he said. Of course, they asked him a question. Rather, the sheikh who says that this person is okay, fihi shay. This person has issues to maybe praise a person or defend the person who has said X, Y, and Z about the Sahaba. But then again, even if the sheikh did mention him by name, that tahdeer, that warning against this person wouldn't be valid today because the sheikh or the person who has said these statements has retracted from it. Type into YouTube and you'll see it. It's clarified it how many times over the last 10 years. Now, uh, as for Sheikh Falah ibn Ismail, then inshallah ta'ala tell these brothers who are using Sheikh Falah ibn Ismail to even take what Sheikh Falah ibn Ismail has said about the uh, people like Salafi publications and other than them who uh, the sheikh, if you ask him today, you will see what he says about them. Naam. As for what he says about Abu Sama Dhabi, then I don't know. We are very close with the Sheikh when he comes. Uh, so maybe next time you want to ask, we can put the question forth. And then uh, the fact that he sits with the people of innovation when he sits with the likes of Mink. Brothers and sisters, go back to my YouTube channel. And if you click on the most popular videos in the first 20, you will find the latest position of Sheikh Abu Sama Dhabi on the Mufti Mink uh, issue. 
your beliefs on the companions doing bid'ah and if Uthman was Umm al-bid'ah yani the mother of bid'ah as your teacher Yahya al-Hajuri believes and after Yahya al-Hajuri was refuted by many ulama guys I find it so strange and uh, astonishing and amazing that I'm being asked about my beliefs regarding the Sahaba now uh, it's very very ajib it's very very ajib the fact that I've taught books in Akhida praising the Sahaba and recently I gave a whole khutbah on the day of Ashura respecting you know the uh, position that the Sahaba they have in our religion uh, to be asked this question ajib okay and uh, and about them doing bid'ah and if Uthman X Y and Z Al Ala Kulin guys uh, I understand that you are referring to the fact that Sheikh Yahya al-Hajuri he said that the adhan that Uthman ibn Affan innovated is a bid'ah okay first you have to understand one thing brothers and sisters Sheikh Yahya al-Hajuri is not the first person who has said that the adhan of Uthman is a bid'ah yani the adhan that they have in uh, Saudi Arabia likewise in Mecca and Al-Medina and in other places as well what do the scholars have to say about this because we know that normally there should be only one but in some places there's two okay Yahya al-Hajuri he holds the position that the Uthman one is a bid'ah okay and before people they get they go crazy and they go on one let's look down and stand over the issue and see what the scholars have to say about this okay and just to point out also those who are criticizing the Sheikh on this they are people who are trying to tear down the Sheikh because if they had any sort of insaf they had any sort of uh, justice and fairness they would have said about the previous scholars the same thing but they are painting the Sheikh to be someone who hates the Sahaba وَهَذَا مَعَاذُ اللَّهِ نعم حدثنا هشام بن غاز قال حدثنا نافع عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه عبد الله بن عمر he said um, that this adhan that Uthman brought is a bid'ah so Abdullah الله بن عمر was the first person to make inkar he was the first person to make inkar so if a person now takes this then why are we going to blame that person you know and you know brothers and sisters uh, when it comes to two sahabas differing on a certain issue we learn in the Surah Al-Fiqh that you take it back to now what did the Prophet Sallallahu do if we look now what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi done uh, we see that he didn't do this adhan Abu Bakr never done it Umar ibn Khattab never done it and Uthman ibn Affan was the first one to do it and even Uthman ibn Affan he done it for a haja as Imam uh, Al-Bani rahimahullah ta'ala he said that Uthman ibn Affan he done it in the sukh so if people want to apply this let them go to the sukh to the markets and make the adhan over there now and because the people couldn't hear it so he wanted to, the people to be aware of that the salah is close and he appointed, assigned someone to go to the uh, markets and make the adhan there. Wadih. So uh, that's why he done it. But, and again, brothers and sisters, today we have the Mukabirat al sawtiyah We have microphones which uh, we have different wasail, al uh, alam al-haditha, in which uh, these technologies we have that it can reach, you know, very far places. So we don't necessarily need it from that angle. And you have scholars in our time as well, like Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad, Sheikh Muhammad Adam al Ethiopi, you have even Sheikh Al Albani, and many other Mashaykh who have said that it's a bid'ah. It is a bid'ah. Or it is mukhalif li al shara. Uh, but again, you have other Mashaykh as well, like Sheikh Saleh, and other of them they have taken the other position. But at the same time, guys, no one from the scholars, look how the scholars behave and look how these guys are behaving. No one ever came out and they started attacking you know, each other in regards to this issue. It's a matter of ijtihad. And you know one thing, brothers and sisters, I've sat down with my Sheikh, I've studied with him, Sheikh Yal Hajuri, and I know, Ana Adra, I am most knowing of his position when it comes to Sahaba, as I was there with him. Uh, how the Sheikh, he respects the Sahaba. He believes that he's the Mubasharun bil Jannah. He's someone that has been giving glad tidings to Al Jannah. Uthman ibn Affan, that all these Sahaba are in the Jannah, Qat'an. You know, sometimes the way to know the belief of a Sheikh is through his students. And I'm telling you this as I was there. His son got killed by the Rafidah. And I remember that they used to burn so much the Shia, the Rafida, who were in the Maj, around the Maj. Every time the Shaykh spoke about them when it came to the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi. And how they are kuffar, you know, disbelievers for insulting the companions. And then they used to like fire stuff at the markaz and they used to get upset and they used to get angry. They used to cut the road just for the Shaykh saying these kind of things. And his khutbah al marufa is known. And he, uh, this khutbah that he gave one time where he called them sababid ashab al people who excessively insult the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi no, sorry, his companions. Naam. And uh, this was known, you can find this on YouTube. He taught us taqdeer wa ihtiram al-sahaba. Naam. 
And I've taught books like Usul Usul Imam Al Hamidi, Lamiyat Al Shaykh Al Islam, Akhirat Al Raziyin, and other books in Akhirat and Tawheed, which and my students, the people I've taught, they know very well what my position on Sahab is. I know, brothers and sisters, someone who's Sunniyah has uh, been known with certainty a qaida that I'm going to teach you a lot. It cannot be removed through a doubtful matter. And likewise, if a person's Islam has been affirmed and he's, we're certain of it, you cannot remove it through something doubtful. And it's qaida, Imam al Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions in his mandoma, uh, he says, يعني, The matters are brought back to uh, the certain uh, ahkam, the certain rulings, matters that are certain. And something doubtful doesn't come and remove it. If a person has been known to be upon the sunnah out of certainty, then a doubtful matter doesn't come and remove these kind of things. These are very, very doubtful matters that are people that are trying to portray over the shaykh. You know, ikhraj al-shakhs min al-sunnati shadeedun, as Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala said, taking a person out of the sunnah is something that is very, very severe. And today, an nas wa yatahawaluna fihi. Naam. And likewise, Abu Sama, yani, to just question the guy's al-islam, or to take his sunnah away from him over these doubtful matters, Naam. Uh, Ravi requires yani, matters to be looked into with uh, you know, seriousness and you know, a lot of ihtimam and concern. You know, wallahi, today it's just become like what? Raffle tickets given sunnah. You're not upon the sunnah, you're upon the sunnah. And on tomorrow, it's become a joke, guys. Wallahi, it's become an absolute joke. And another thing, guys, not everyone that falls into bid'ah becomes an innovator. And not everyone who falls into kufr, he becomes a kafir, as Imam Al-Tim Ta'ala he mentioned. The fact that some scholars say, and likewise Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, that um, Abdullah ibn Umar uh, said that Uthman ibn Affan uh, said, yani, uh, Uthman ibn Affan's adhan was a bid'ah and they fell into it. It doesn't assist that he's an innovator. Sahabas make mistakes. They are not ma'soom. They're not infallible. Wadih. So uh, I hope these uh, matters are very well known. Rather, nahnu nuhibbu sahabat wa nujillahum. Wa nujillahum. Naam. So let the people be aware of this and, uh, and my Sheikh does not believe that Look where he is now, he's in Makkah, he got driven out of his home And it was none other because of his defense and his love for the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim And his kutub are ma'rufa La shaka wala rayba, I don't believe that the Sheikh is ma'asum, he's infallible Of course he has mistakes, there are things that I disagree with the Sheikh on Wallahi billahi Naam uh, Ajeeb, you know, that's absolutely ajeeb Tayyib And I continue to associate with him. Brothers and sisters, you know me, I'm a person who is not scared to hide his beliefs and what his position is. Naam. And I've come previously spoken about my own brothers who attacked certain mashayikh. Like Sheikh Falah, there was a brother, my Qareen, a brother who studied in Damaj at the same time as me, uh, Zamili, who said things about Sheikh Falah. Even though Sheikh Falah is not my teacher, I would come out and I defend him. I'm not scared of anyone to say what my beliefs are. I will say it. And I will carry on promoting what I personally believe to be correct. Like, there's people now who are questioning Sheikh Salih Suhaimi. Ana so dafi anhu. Sheikh Ibrahim al Rahili kadalik. They've oppressed him. Ana so dafi anhu. Likewise, Muhammad al Maliki, there was once I defended the Sheikh. Naam, even though there were some brothers from my own camp who were saying things about him. Ana so dafi. Because I believe this to be ibadah. It's not something new. Man dabba an ardi akhi kana haqqan ala Allah yan yu'tikhu min al-nar. The Prophet said, Whoever defends the honor of his brother, then. Allah has made it incumbent upon him to defend him from the fire. Naam. So uh, I will personally carry on. And Jazakallah khair brothers and sisters for again verifying and uh, taking your time out to verify these things. As this is something that many people have left off. And I appreciate this much. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of you and to guide all of you, to guide us all uh, in taking this manhaj in its correct way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليه. The date is today. Today is the fourth on the Friday, November, and I currently mention this while currently studying in Al Medina. And brothers and sisters, one thing I request. I don't take, I don't choose to, or I don't want to be going back and forth on this issue. I've kind of got very, very bored of it. So please, I request that anyone that listens to me to yani, not send me these kind of things. Because to be honest with you, it kind of hurts that people are still saying this about Sheikh Yahya Al-Hajuri. 
you know, after everything he has been through, his family members got killed, he defended a sahib, he got driven out of his home, and people are still attaching this to the Shaykh. فنجعل, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَعْنَةَ الله على الظالمين, The curse of Allah Azza wa upon those who oppress. Um, so we ask the people to be fair and just in their speech, and uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا خُلْتُمْ فَعَدِيلُ When you speak, speak with justice. And Allah says, يَا لَذِينَ أَمْنُ كُنُوا خَوَّامِينَ بِالْقِسْتِ شُهَدَاءَ لِلَّهِ Oh, you believe people who are establishing justice. Naam. And there's many, many ayahs. يَا دَاوُدُ إِنَا جَعَلْنَاكَ خَلِيفَةً فِي الْأَرْضِ فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَىٰ Oh, دَاوُدُ, we have made you a khalifa upon the earth and judge between the people with truth. وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَىٰ And do not follow your desires. And stop pressing the people. And if you are going to criticize others, أخي, do it with ilm and adl. As Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said, وَالْكَلَامُ فِي النَّاسِ يَجِبُ أَنْ يَكُونَ بِعِلْمٍ وَعَدْلٍ لَا بِجَهْلٍ وَظُلْمٍ كَحَلَ أَهْلِ الْبِدَعِ When speaking about others and criticizing them, it should be done with what? Adl, justice and knowledge. Not with dhulm, oppression and ignorance, as this is the situation of the people of Bid'ah. Allah knows best. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.